Hello everyone, I welcome you to the CEC lecture series. I am Nupur Chavla, teaching English literature at Maitri College, Delhi University. And today's lecture is part of the ongoing lecture series on the texts of feminism. And today we are going to talk about this uh, very seminal, uh, um, you know, women's rights activist that is Lucretia Mott and in particular her text that is called The Discourse on Woman. It's an essay which was written in 19th century, that is in 1849. And here in this essay, she, uh, you know, talks about, she uh, she's actually making a very, very strong case for uh, uh, the position of women in society. She first examines the existing, uh, you know, parameters of the way a woman is judged or the way a woman is actually, uh, you know, approached, not judged, but the way she's approached. Uh, and from there, uh, she builds the argument of what should be the case, right? So, in the first part of the lecture, we had discussed uh, the uh, you know, some of the points that we witness in her essay in the initial parts. Uh, from there, we are now going to look at some more arguments that one notices in her essay. So, you see, uh, while talking about women's uh, condition and also, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, establishing the merit or the potential that women have, she uh, gives also argument. I mean, she she seems to be supporting this argument of hers with instances from history, right? So she not only just talks theoretically, but in the essay, she also very well supports what she says with examples from history as well, right? And we'll uh, very quickly look at this quotation from the text. And this will tell you that how she quotes instances from history in order to make the point that she's making. Now she says, and I quote, women or woman was not wanting in courage in the early ages. In war and bloodshed, this trait was often displayed. Gresham and Roman history have lauded and honored her in this character. English history records her courageous women too, unquote. So over here, we notice that how Mott brings our attention to women who have displayed immense amount of courage in the early ages, right? So she uh, talks about the fact that how women have not always, have not only been restricted to domesticity alone, right? They have been in war. They have witnessed bloodshed, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, firsthand. And they have also been not just passive uh, participants. Instead, they have actively taken part in wars and particularly in very important, uh, you know, events in history. So here she's talking about the early ages, right? And she also mentions that how even the Gresham and the Roman history have lauded and honored, uh, you know, a lot of women's, um, uh, you know, contribution in that sense, right? And not just uh, Gresham and Roman history, but Mott also draws her attention to English history as well. And how English history has its own, uh, uh, you know, uh, so to say, set of courageous women who have shown this kind of merit. And uh, one such woman that she discusses is a Joan of Arc, right? So, of course, we will not go into that uh, uh, detail about these women uh, because, uh, you know, that would be a detour. But then it's, uh, it is important for us to understand that how Mott then is, uh, you know, uh, substantiating her claim for the fact that women must realize their potential by engaging in uh, uh, cultivation of their uh, uh, intellect and uh, uh, while also, you know, kind of perfecting their uh, other responsibilities. So she then seems to be, uh, uh, so to say, uh, you know, kind of giving uh, further emphasis on uh, this point of hers by taking examples from history. Okay. Now, still another point that we make about uh, her essay is that, um, you see, Lucretia Mott does not merely uh, a stop short at ideological reform alone, okay? but instead she also talks about its legal aspect. 
So while she does talk about uh, the fact that how women must, uh, you know, kind of uh, um, uh, uh, invest in themselves intellectually, they should cultivate themselves. All of these are ideas which she, uh, you know, presents as alternatives, which she presents that must be realized by women. But from here, she also moves to another very important dimension, that is the dimension of law. Okay. Now, if we understand the significance of reference to law, now you see ideas or practices, uh, they get. Uh, so to say sanction when uh, they are also you know when when there are legal provisions uh, to uh, to to ensure that those ideas are executed right because it is very easy for anybody to just say that all right we do regard you as this woman of um, equal stature as a woman who resp uh, who who deems all respect etc but is it actually put into practice or not right or those practices which work against this kind of an understanding uh, are they then uh, you know kind of taken seriously or not so all these things are then ensured with or or, or they're ensured in law and thereby the importance of legal provisions as well. So we see that how Lucretia Mott is this very smart uh, you know, woman who is aware of the fact that just ideas alone are not sufficient, but it's important to back those ideas up. It is important to back up that kind of vision with legal provisions as well. Right. So let's look at these uh, sentences uh, from her essay where she uh, talks about the legal aspect. Now she says, and I quote, that a woman asks nothing as favor, but as right. She wants to be acknowledged a moral responsible being. She is seeking not to be governed by laws in the making of which she has no voice. She is deprived of almost every right in civil society, her exclusion from the pulpit or ministry, her duties marked out for her by her equal brother. This is unworthy of her true dignity." Unquote. So you see, in this longish quotation, we notice two important things. First, right at the outset, she says that we as women are not asking for anything as a favor. But whatever demands that are being put forward, whatever demands are being put forth, they are the rights that need to be acknowledged, right? And these rights and provisions then are not the uh, are, are not favors that society does to a woman. Instead, they acknowledge the presence of a woman as a moral responsible being, right? Now. The other important uh, um, uh, aspect in this quotation that we just now saw is that where Lucretia Mott says that the woman is not seeking to be governed by laws in the making of which she has no voice, right? So now she goes to a next level. So it is not only uh, sufficient for um, women to have laws that sanction her, uh, you know, or, or, or that guarantee uh, uh, certain rights to her but at the same time she also says that she needs to be the part of the law making process right she says that she is not seeking to be governed by the laws in the making of which she has no voice right so these laws also this entire legal procedure not just the enactment of the laws but at the same time the framing of the laws as well so in that process too, women need to be included, right? So you see that how Lucretia Mott is very, very, uh, you know, so to say, um, uh, rigorous in her, um, in her understanding of what is needed in order to address the current position of women in society, right? And then the third aspect also of uh, this longish quotation that we notice also is that where she says that, uh, you know, if we uh, look at the current condition, women are uh, excluded 
from uh, uh, from almost every right in civil society so that is what the present condition is that is the uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, the reality of exclusion the reality of invisibilization uh, uh, from the civil society from the pulpit as she says that is that from the religious uh, practices and also even in matrimony uh, mot points out that how all these spaces uh, you know we see women as um, uh, you know kind of uh, enjoying not a very powerful position and she says that to address this we need to have the right uh, legal provisions that would guarantee that uh, position to a woman right from there we move to a still another important point that lucretia mot makes in her essay so you see uh, she says that and this is again pertaining to legality so two things uh, uh, so she 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 discusses the legal aspect at two levels first at the level of uh, you know kind of having such laws uh, that do uh, you know recognize uh, the rights and the sanctions which are due to a woman and they ensure that they are uh, kind of you know uh, granted to her uh, at the same time she is also talked about the fact that how women need to be part of the law framing procedure as well okay from here we look at a still another aspect of uh, the discussion around law in her uh, um, essay she says and i quote that it is with reluctance that i make the demand for the political rights of women because this claim is so distasteful to the age woman shrinks in the present state of society from taking any interest in politics now when she talks about the political rights right so of course when she is talking about rights she is uh, talking about the legal framework but what we see over here is another addition of the idea of politics as well so she says that uh, it is with reluctance that i make the demand for the political rights of a uh, woman okay uh, uh what why did she say that say that why is there this kind of a reluctance because she says that the current position or the, or the, or the present state of society is such that makes a woman shrink from taking any interest in politics now what is the difference between uh, politics and uh, the legal framework so when a woman is engaged in politics she would uh, you know mobilize opinion um come out in the streets express herself openly not just uh, you know in texts alone but would uh, would you know mobilize the others along with her as well so active direct action uh, for a particular purpose then and also uh, 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 you know kind of um, mobilizing support for that uh, uh, for that ideology for that thought all of this comprises politics and lucretia mot says that uh, in the conditions that had existed in in, in the 19th century um, uh, women in the present state then uh, present in the sense that the state in the 19th century were not taking interest in politics now what could be the reason the reason is that there was no uh, you know kind of space or that kind of an alternative did not even exist for them at that time but you see we should not forget the fact that lucretia mot is at least able to think about it the fact that lucretia mot brings it in mention in her essay is enough for us to know that perhaps this idea may not uh, uh, have a, you know kind of taken proper shape in society at that time it may not have concretized in uh, at that time but it does exist at the seed level so the idea of politics uh, or women being involved in politics is at least there right so that's something that we as readers as perceptive readers need to a uh, kind of uh, uh, notice in this essay on uh, discourse on women by lucretia mot right now from there she also uh, you know kind of um, makes a point about uh, matrimony as well and uh, uh, you know uh, a woman's position in uh, uh, marriage right now when we talk about marriage of course uh, marriage uh, is that institution which can be approached um, uh, from the religious perspective 
can be approached from the civil perspective can also be looked at from the point of view of uh, uh, laws and legality right now in this essay uh, Lucretia Mott actually uh, you know yet again uh, uh, comments on marriage in the light of law and she says on no good ground can the legal existence of the wife be suspended during her marriage and her property surrendered to her husband in the intelligent ranks of society the wife may not in point of fact be so degraded as the law would degrade her because public sentiment is above the law unquote so what is happening here lucretia mot is making some very strong arguments in this case firstly she says that the legal existence of a wife cannot be suspended during a marriage so she is making women aware of the fact that how there is a legal aspect of this marriage or of this of this institution of matrimony as well right so it is not just all about um about the uh, beauty of uh, spending time with a man and, and 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 having a family but at the same time it is equally a legal framework too and lucretia mot says that one should not forget and in fact on no good grounds as she says can the legal existence of the wife be suspended right from there she makes another very important point about her property rights as well so she is, so she says that as an equal part in marriage in matrimony the woman also has a claim on property too okay so it cannot be surrendered to the husband as she says right so uh, again uh, uh, you know we see that how lucretia mot goes into not just the ideas but she also is going into the material aspects of existence which ensure this kind of security to the woman right that there are laws backing her up there is a sanction of property uh, you know uh, that will make sure that uh, her livelihood uh, apart from the man then is not uh, you know hampered so she is basically bringing to uh, light she is she is she is basically drawing everybody's attention to uh, these material aspects then that can serve to strengthen a position of the woman and she says that uh, uh, you know when these aspects are uh, paid attention to that uh, uh, always further serves to strengthen uh, uh, the uh, the otherwise uh, you know so to say not so strong position of women in society so you see with these kind of arguments that she makes in this essay she is opening up these areas of thought she is opening up these areas in order to understand uh you know all these aspects uh, so that uh, uh, you know a uh, women's position can be rethought okay um at another level we see in the essay mot then uh you know uh, emphasizes not just on the cultivation of mind not just on the rights of the women and the legal aspects of our existence but she also talks about this idea of being okay now let's look at this quotation where this idea of being this idea of cultivation and the idea of active participation seem to come together and this is what actually forms so to say a comprehensive crux of mart's argument too she says and i quote let women then go on not asking as favor but claiming as right the removal of all the hindrances to her elevation in the scale of being let her receive encouragement for the proper cultivation of all uh, of of all her powers so that they may enter profitably into the active business of life unquote now this uh, seems to be very well summing up um you know what mot uh, seems to have established throughout her essay the first thing that she says is that uh uh she is not asking again so you see this is a repetition here she says she 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 yet again uh, uh you know in this part of the essay says that she is not asking for any favor a woman is not asking for any favor but instead she is claiming it as a right a right to what the removal of hindrances to the elevation 
of her self in the scale of being right now what do we mean by elevation in the scale of being you see when we look at the idea of being being uh, means when an individual exists consciously on the basis of the choices that one makes has the freedom to decide the course of one's own life has the agency to make of themselves what they wish to without any external limitations and this then uh, uh, if we understand as being is different from existence right where existence is not a conscious action on the part of an individual because there's life so somebody uh, so uh, so the individual exists but the individual will uh, enter into this state of being when they have the capacity to consciously make choices and choose the conditions for their um, uh, operation and therefore uh, you know lucretia mot seems to be very uh, carefully choosing this word where she says that uh, uh, you know uh, that she needs to uh, 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 have all these hindrances removed so that she is elevated in the scale of being and she receives that encouragement for the proper cultivation of all her powers those powers which she is capable of those powers that she uh, you know kind of needs to uh, realize so that she comes into her own real self and as the krishya mot would uh, call it to realize her true womanhood right so now if we very quickly sum up uh, the important points that mot seems to be making the first thing that we say is that lucretia mot throughout her essay uses the word woman and not women so this use this conscious use of the uh, uh, singular instead of the plural then seems to further foreground that how uh, lucretia mot uh, you know kind of uh, visualizes the woman Uh, 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 and her individuality, instead of uh, you know, kind of uh, 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 you, uh, you know, looking at them as this blanket section of society, right? Second, we see that how in her essay she confronts religious, legal, and social framing of women as the subordinate to men. So her uh, engagement then, in that sense, is comprehensive. Okay. Uh, where she does not only talk about one aspect but she covers all three next we see that she also gives the idea of a true woman right which defines which 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 seems to be a, some kind of a redefinition of femininity thus displaying a balanced approach taken up by mot second last thing that we say is that she also focuses on the legal aspect of reform not only talking about ideas but she also goes into the uh uh into the laws and rights and provisions that are equally important to uh to ensure a woman's central position right and finally she uh, uh you know kind of um uh, talking about uh, after uh, after talking about the cultivation of the mind she talks about the idea of elevation of woman in being uh sanction of woman with the requisite rights and the cultivation of herself uh uh you know in terms of intellect and in terms of her ability to engage with ideas so these are some of the arguments that that lucretia mot makes as a 19th century women's rights activist and an abolitionist um a writer thank you